everyone knows freedom is not free. A great number of lives have been lost while performing what some recognize as the ultimate patriotic duty. Across America we memorialize our military, we honor them, and we remember those who are missing. The ultimate price has been paid. Some have died a different death, however. A kind of death not so obvious. Losing relationships. Losing the person they once were. And they die a little more when they are stigmatized by sensational media and people who just don't understand. They should not be defined by their pain. Placing signs in their yard warning that shooting up fireworks could trigger their PTSD. John says Mike asked friends and family not to shoot, and then fighting and fighting sheriffs and deputies and missed him something. connected to the military. What what branch of service was your brother in? He served in, in Iraq for four years. Okay. Uh, and what was some of your experience with your brother before PTSD and with your brother after PTSD? Uh, he was going to school for uh, underwater diving, mm -hmm. uh, underwater welding. Uh, unfortunately, his life was cut short from a motorcycle accident. Mm -hmm. How was he? How was he different after he came back from Iraq? He drank a lot. That was kind of his way of coping with PTSD. Mm -hmm. And then you know, just hanging out with his friends. Uh, I guess loneliness is part of it. I control it, it doesn't control me, but it will always be there. I'm definitely, uh, right now, I believe the current statistic is one in five veterans uh, live with PTSD. Uh, some more chronic than others, but, but all of those who have the symptoms uh, go through many of the same, same events in life and cause the unraveling in their families and with their loved ones. And, and often live alone, and uh, avoidance is, is one of the big symptoms. One of the big ones is uh, very, very uh, overprotective. Uh, never wanting to give uh, a, a, a chance for failure or risk when it came to my children especially. And I, I remember, uh, I remember even when my wife and I first started our family, one of the things that I envisioned, and I, you know, when, 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 you're, when you're living with something you don't understand what it is, you learn to justify all of the things you want to do, whether they're negative or not. And I remember uh, asking my wife to agree with me that if we had children, that uh, that she would uh, not go to work, but stay at home and nurture them. And, and, and of course, you you know how I rationalized that. You know, I wanted the old school family and wanted my wife to be comfortable with only what I could earn. And consequently, in my head, I was thinking, I don't want my children at a daycare center. I don't want uh, people that I don't know and don't trust uh, handling my children. And, and sometimes even with people that I knew and trusted, my in-laws, uh, their aunties and their cousins, 
grandparents. It's, 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 it's overwhelming. 